Hi and welcome to this online training video for Automation Studio. In this video, we'll be creating an electro-hydraulic circuit. To do so, we'll be creating an electrical control circuit and we'll be editing the directional valve to make it an electro valve. So let's start with this. In order to edit the valve, you can double click on the directional valve and go under technical specification. And in here, you'll be able to edit any kind of properties for the directional valve number of ports, its initial position, the number of position, or the type of command and the spool configuration that you have. So if you want to change the spool configuration, for example, you can double click onto it and then select the one you want from a wide choice offered in Automation Studio. Same is true for the command. So here you can double click onto it, open the choice, and here we'll be selecting a solenoid. Afterwards, you can edit its position on the layout with the arrows. This is only for visual aspect. It does not affect simulation. And now to create the electrical control circuit, we can select from the library either the GIC standard or the IEC standard. And as usual, when you select the root of the technology, you'll see all the most commonly used components in the bottom section of the Library Explorer. If you don't find the components you're looking for, then you can expand the library and browse in the different components categories. So I'll be inserting a power supply and a common. Then I'll be inserting a normally open push button. And you'll notice that every time I insert a component that emits a signal that acts as an output signal, Automation Studio will ask me to give it an alias or a name. Uh, it is highly suggested to give a short and representative name as we'll be using them later on. So I'll be calling my push button PB1. I also need a coil, so I'll insert a coil to act as a relay. And this one I'm going to call it R1 for relay1. Now, as I insert my normally open contact, Automation Studio opens the variable assignment sheet. Most of the time you insert a component that will receive a signal or act as an input signal, Automation Studio will ask you to which component you want to link it. So this is the interface you get. On the left, you see all the internal variables of your component. And on the right, you'll see the variable manager and all the var different variables in your project. So there may be a lot of them, so that's where the alias come in handy. So I want to link my normally open contact with my relay, I called R1, so I'm going to type in R to filter, and then I can find really easily the signal I'm looking for. So I can double click and create the link. And here you see those two components are now hyperlinked. If I control click onto one of them, I can browse from a component to the other, so it's easy for me to find out which component is linked with which. Now I'll need a solenoid as well. That solenoid acts like an output signal, so I'm going to call it Sol1. And now a couple of clicks to create my wires. Now the final step is to link my solenoid for my electrical control to the one in my directional valve. So double clicking on my directional valve and going under variable assignment, I see here again on the left all the different internal variables for my directional valve. If I want to narrow down to the internal variables of the solenoid, I can expand the subcomponent details in the tree here and select sol. So I only keep the variable from the solenoid or again I can click on the picture of the component, the solenoid, and do the same. Now I want to link this with Sol, Sol1 here, and you see the link has been created as well. So now as I go in simulation, in my control circuit, the lines that are powered are purple, the ones that are connected to the common are green. As I push my push button, I will power my relay which will close my contact here and power the solenoid. 
as this solenoid is linked to this one, it will move the directional valve into the extend position to extend the cylinder. As I release my button, the spring will act back and the directional valve will go back into retract position. So let's see that. You notice that the, you see the contact closing and the color changing. All right, so now if I want to extend completely the cylinder at a single push of a button without having the need to hold it down, I can create a latch here, close my circuit, and then if I go back to the simulation, you'll notice that the relay keeps the contact closed that keeps the signal on. So now I have to find a way to retract my, uh, the cylinder. So to do so, I'll go back into my hydraulic category and I'll insert a proximity sensor. Here again, this one will emit the signal and output signal. So I will call it A1. Now you may notice on the proximity sensor that there's a diamond shaped connection port. These are mechanical connection ports that will only be activated when two of them will be directly overlaid. And you notice there are three of them on the cylinder, one at the end of the rod and two on the piston. So to know precisely where to put the proximity sensor in order to have an end of stroke sensor, for example, then you can double click on your cylinder, go on the data sheet, and then here into the extension property, which is in percentage, you can type it 100%. So you'll be able to see precisely where the cylinder is once fully extended. So then you can set precisely your sensor where you want it to be to, to have the two diamond connection port directly overlaid and then set back the initial extension to 0%. And finally, in the, my sensor switch category from my electrical control technology, I'll be inserting a normally closed proximity switch. I will want to link this prox proximity switch to my proximity sensor, so I can double click, go in variable assignment, filter with A, and link to A1. Now to directly insert this proximity switch in my circuit, I will be holding down the shift key. So dropping the component onto my line, you see the connection ports are black, it is correctly connected. Now you have noticed that I created my circuit on two lines, I could have done on three. So I'll be holding down the shift key to disconnect my solenoid, to move it on my third line, and holding down the control key to duplicate this normally open contact. As I copy it, the association with the contact remains. So I'll be removing extra lines and create the new ones. Now, as I go in simulation, you'll notice that as I push my button, the cylinder will extend completely. And once these two diamond shaped connection ports will be overlaid, the E1 sensor will activate and will open the switch here, depower the relay open the contact, depower the solenoid, and then retract the cylinder. So it will extend and retract automatically. Let's see that again in action. Thanks for watching this online training video for Automation Studio. We invite you to watch the other videos and we'd like to thank you for your time.